State with Dennis House, Connecticut's most watched local political program. Good morning and welcome to Face the State. We begin this Sunday with the latest from the state legislature. And with us today, we have State Representative Ernest Hewitt. He is the Democrat from New London and State Representative Dr. Prasad Srinivasan, Republican of Glastonbury. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the program today. And I'll begin with you, Representative Hewitt, because I know this has been uh, one of your big issues at the Capitol, and that's taking DNA from a suspect when they are arrested. You were originally against it, yes. now you're for it. Let's tell us about that. Well, yeah, I was. Last year I was against this bill. I fought the chief state's attorney on this bill. We went head to head in judiciary. And, and on my way home that day, I started doing my homework. I started, I said, what am I doing? I said, this thing would not only get people out of jail, it would send guilty people to jail. So I started reading up on it and, and uh, came back and said, I'm going to introduce this bill this year. And uh, it's been a good battle ever since. I uh, brought a lady from uh, New Mexico by the name of Jan Sepich. She, uh, the bill, Katie's Law, was passed in New Mexico because of her daughter was raped and murdered in New Mexico. And uh, New Mexico at the time didn't have DNA upon arrest. And so it went six years before they found the killer. But she lobbied the legislator and got this bill passed. Where does this stand now here in Connecticut? What's it, next? It is, uh, we've had the public hearing and judiciary and uh, we've got some very good reviews. She came up and testified, and a lot of people that was dead set against it has now changed their mind. So now it's gonna come down to a vote. Dr. Srinivasan, you're a medical doctor. How do you feel about this? I think this is, uh, this is definitely something we need to do, and I'm so glad that this has come back to the legislator now, and when we vote on this, I definitely support this bill, because I firmly believe that for the her horrific crimes that have been committed, we can be one up you know, having the DNA with us uh, ahead of time so these crimes are never repeated uh, again and again before the person is finally caught. So I really think we should go for this and hopefully we'll be able to make it happen this time. Representative Hewitt, I think your decision-making process is probably a comfort to voters who now can see that lawmakers can change their minds sometimes well, yeah. and completely do a reversal in your case. Is this common? It's, <laughs> it's not common for me, but guess what? I've managed to keep an open mind in Hartford and that's what you have to do because you have to study what you're voting on against or for. You have to study it and you could change your mind sometime. Just remember, uh, 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 what was his name, James Tillman that was exonerated through DNA. Since then they have caught the real rapist that went to jail in the state of Virginia and his DNA was taken upon arrest because Virginia is one of the uh, 24 states that has DNA upon arrest, and they matched it to an 18-year-old rape in Connecticut. Oh, Let me tell you something. This is a powerful tool. Fingerprints don't get it no more. It's DNA. Way of the future. Let's talk a little bit about um, decriminalization of marijuana. A lot of folks out there think it's going to be legal and you can smoke pot wherever you want. That's not the case. There are two bills right now, medical marijuana and lowering some of the, uh, uh, well, the criminal punishments right. for using certain marijuana. Amounts, for certain uh, amounts. Right. You're dead set against... Uh, Medical marijuana. Yeah. Right. And, and the reason is, you know, this past Saturday night, Sunday morning, we all turned our clocks ahead. We moved ahead. Why would you want to turn medicine backwards? You know, that is what we do with medical marijuana. Using plants for medicine is nothing new. Our, our plants, our medicines have come from plants. They will always continue for plants. If you remember, uh, you know, ages ago, we used to treat our asthmatics by smoking. You know, that, that was how the medicine was available. We now have theophylline, we have the tablets, we have the inhalers, and that is the way to treat an asthmatic. So would you go back and treat people that way? The answer is absolutely no. And medical marijuana, as you know, is available in the form of an FDA-approved drug. Marinol is one drug that's available. There's another drug that's in the pipeline. So patients who need that particular medication can get it the right way, FDA approved, under the constant monitoring and supervision of a physician. And these are, remember, very sick patients. I mean, you're treating patients who have severe weight loss. You have patients who have severe nausea and vomiting. So in this complex mode, you're adding on something which can be very injurious. If smoking, we know the hazards of smoking. Medical ma smoking marijuana is 20 times worse than regular smoke. The carcinogens there are absolutely un uh, you know, unacceptable. Uh, and also, just, to, if you can, just for me to complete, is that 
patients who, for whom we're going to give this are compromised patients. Your HIV patients are the ones with weight loss and with severe nausea, vomiting, who you may be recommending this. In their compromised immune system, you are now inhaling something which can be potentially so dangerous, and that is the reason why when you have an alternative, good alternatives, monitored by the FDA, monitored by the physician, and that should be the way to go. And you disagree? I totally disagree. I, I started the back in this bill of probably two or three years ago when uh, Representative Bakiaki introduced this because I think she lost mm -hmm. her husband to some type of cancer. And he I, smoked marijuana to make him feel better. Yes, and, and I don't think that someone that's dying of cancer or any other disease is really concerned about uh, the smoking of marijuana. They're concerned about eating. They're concerned about feeling better. And that, this is why I support the, uh, the medical marijuana, because I think they should have that right to do that. What about decriminalizing marijuana? How do you both feel about that? I think <sighs> we should decriminalize marijuana. I mean, you got, you got kids out here that get caught with a joint in a car, and their lives are ruined for the rest of their lives with a criminal record now. Remember, they go to get a job now, and it pops up on the screen. They've been arrested for marijuana. Okay. I think that's totally, totally wrong. Now, when you can, de we're not saying legalize marijuana. We're saying decriminalize it, where you got caught with a certain amount of pot. You get a ticket, just like a speeding ticket, because it's been proven already through statistics that the conviction rate being, being caught with a joint is not good anyway. So just give them a ticket. And, and let it go from there. Let's talk about taxes. Uh, the governor's having town hall meetings all around the state. What are your constituents saying to you, Representative Srinivasan? They are very concerned. The phone's been ringing off the hook. The emails, I'm not able to keep up with the amount of emails that I've been getting. And I have office hours that I do once a week on, on Thursday nights, actually. And, uh, and people come. And they, they talk constantly about the concern about the taxes that are going to go up across the board, whether it be the sales tax, whether it be the luxury tax, or across the board, you know, the, 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 the credit for the property tax that they're not going to get. They are concerned that we are being taxed excessively. Yes, it is shared sacrifice is what we were told, but they don't see the sharing. They don't see that component at all. And they want to see the spending cuts. They want to make sure that that happens before we are taxed even further. They are, whether, you know, we have, we have people in, you know, who have, you know, who have boats in, in, in Glastonbury. They have their things. So, and they said they're just going to move over to Rhode Island. Would you vote for the governor's budget as it stands right now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And absolutely, I would not vote for the governor's budget as it stands right now. This is why you do a budget at the beginning of the year. Everybody knows there's going to be negotiations back and forth about this budget. There's things in the budget that I can't support right now, especially the, uh, the, um, the, the tax, the $500 tax credit, a property tax credit. I don't like it with that gone, you know, where people can't get that. But everybody now knows that this, one thing I do congratulate the governor on, he went and took his show on the road. I've not, never seen that. He's going around, I don't know how he many cities. He's yeah. out there trying to propose his budget. But he also knows if you sit the bar here, we can negotiate here. Well, you know, let's talk about something that really hasn't been discussed much at the state legislature. This is probably the most diverse legislature we've ever seen. You were saying that your black and Latino caucus has never been larger. Representative uh, Srinivasan, you're the first Indian American elected to the legislature right. in the state. Let's show you a, a little uh, graphic we have of a potential Senate race that we're talking about right now. Right now we have two declared candidates, Susan Beisowitz and Chris Murphy, already in the race. And then Frank Borges, William Tong. Uh, William Tong, uh, the first Asian American elected to the General Assembly. Frank Borges, if he were to make it to the Senate, uh, would be the first black senator. And of course, the first uh, uh, Asian American senator would be uh, Representative Tong. Uh, how does it make you feel that this is what we could be looking at this year? It's much different than years past. I think it's, I think it's an absolutely beautiful thing. This is a democracy. The only person you don't see it there is my picture, because I haven't seen the head of the rank yet. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's awesome that, that those people are able to do that. This is America. You want to run, you can run. I, I, I concur. I mean, to me, you know, as you, as you just now said, that I'm the first Indian American to be in the state legislature. And, and to me, I see this, that 
if you have the right attitude and you're willing to put in the time, effort, and the energy, anything and everything is possible in this nation. The and to see these people running, I mean, possibly running, and making a good, uh, you know, good uh, bid for that is absolutely wonderful. It is democracy is its best, and our founding fathers would be extremely happy to see this diverse nature of the state assembly that we right now have. What about diversity in the Republican Party right now? We, it, 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 in it, our state, in our state, I, you know, we do. You know, it, it definitely can be more diverse than what it is, and I think it's just a question of time. You know, the the party has to embrace more people, and and I'm sure it's going to do that. And you know, yes, we we have Asian Americans there, and we, you know, you have me as an Indian American, and I can see the the feeling that sooner and or later it'll be more and more of us in the state assembly on the Republican tickets as well. Representative Prasad Srinivas from Glastonbury, Republican, and Ernest Hewitt, State Representative, Democrat from Atlanta. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us on the program. We'll see you back here again. Thank you.